The Earth is a delicate interlinked system of natural forces. When that system becomes unbalanced, it can have global effects. In Greenland in particular, these effects may not be immediately obvious, but they have the potential to affect us all. Scientists from around the world are researching this changing environment, trying to understand what will happen in the future. Among these scientists are glaciologists from Swansea University in Wales. It's interesting, there's actually been surprisingly little work in Greenland as a whole. A lot of work's been done in Antarctica, uh, and then a, a bit in Greenland, and then suddenly people realised that Greenland's actually the place that's changing most rapidly. It is during the summer months that glaciologists from Swansea University in Wales, funded by the Levy Hume Trust, can take advantage of the less severe conditions to do detailed field work. Project leader is world expert Professor Tavy Murray. Our project's called Glimpse and we're trying to understand the overall stability of the Greenland ice sheet. So what we really want to know is how much water Greenland's going to contribute to sea level in, in the future. Over the past two decades, scientists from around the world have been monitoring the Greenland ice sheet. They have observed that the ice sheet is thinning and losing mass at what appears to be an unprecedented rate. Simply put, the warmer temperatures over the past few decades are causing the ice sheet to shrink faster than the winter snows are replenishing it. What happens is snow falls in the centre of Greenland and it's transported slowly outwards to, to the edges. Part of it melts and runs off. Other parts are discharged through tidewater glaciers as icebergs. And in Greenland, it's about half and half. So about half of the snowfall that lands on Greenland runs off as water and about half comes out as icebergs. That proportion has been changing over recent time and much more of the snow has been actually discharged as icebergs. That seems to be one of the keys. To, and if we can understand the rates of discharge through the glaciers of Greenland, then we can actually understand the sea level rise which is coming from Greenland. These expeditions were to focus on the two largest glaciers in the southeast region. Helheim Glacier at the head of Sermalik Fjord and further to the north, Kangalusuak Glacier. These glaciers drain into the sea through huge fjords and are particularly important as their movement has dramatically accelerated in the last decade. Separate from the main ice sheet and by Greenlandic standards it is small, the Mitivikak Glacier covers an area of 31 square kilometres and it is a visible example of rapid glacial retreat. Mutiva Cap was the first real glacier we'd come across. I mean, we'd seen them in the distance, but we actually managed to get up and walk onto Mutiva Cat. I was totally blown away by how much Mutiva Cat was changing. Even day to day, you could see the water physically running off the glacier. The ice was just melting in front of your eyes, and there are huge water channels that run all the way down the glacier. Some of these had formed three new waterfalls, which had formed over just a couple of weeks as the ice had melted back and exposed them. And that really showed just how quickly this glacier was changing. The glacier was being melted away by the temperature. And on the warmest days, the glacier was losing up to 10 centimetres in thickness all over the glacier. And that was just running off over the waterfalls and into the sea. Although Mitivakat is just one small glacier, a similar pattern of continued melting and retreat is seen in small glaciers around most of Greenland. More importantly, the huge Greenland ice sheet is also retreating and thinning across most sectors, partly through increased melting and partly through increased iceberg carving. Very occasionally, everything comes together and spectacular events occur. 
Tim James and his cameras, still waiting above the carving front of Helheim Glacier, were in the right place at the right time. Carving is basically when a piece of ice falls off the front of a glacier that terminates either in a lake or in, in the sea. A calving event can be really just a, a small piece of ice, or it can be the piece of ice the size of a house. Or in the case of the calving event that we witnessed this summer, um, it was four kilometers wide, 800 meters high, and about 300 meters deep. And it's more like the size of a small city. It was really pretty amazing. The, the noise was phenomenal. So when we heard this really loud banging, shooting down the fjord, we knew we had to get the cameras rolling. This particular calving event, the whole thing, you can sort of see it as it, it moves forward and lifts up and then flips over backwards. And that's probably just because it's a, the glacier is on the, on the bottom, resting on the ground at that, at that time, and uh, the buoyancy forces sort of flip it over. As this field trip came to an end, the team were reminded that they were in a part of the world that sees extremes of weather. Although our very last day that we were trying to work, the wind got really quite strong and it got quite stormy. And uh, the captain of our boat, Siggy, um, he's never said stop working before. He's always done exactly what we wanted to do. We were trying to take measurements over the back and he started looking a bit concerned and sort of walking around the boat quite fast. And eventually we had to give up. We had an iceberg that was look really small and as it raised in the wave it would just rear up and this huge iceberg would appear and it really was quite uh, interesting to be said. It was really windy, it was blowing the icebergs all around the place and we were getting blown around in the boat as well so there was a lot of movement and I got up on deck with the camera and it was really quite, quite incredible but also scary. really had felt a sense of nature that, that we were very we were a very small boat alone at sea but at the time it was a sort of mixture of trying to uh, keep my stomach down and, and trust the captain <laughs> that he would get be able to get us through. It's an Icelandic glow you know that's causing all this trouble and uh, I think the Greenlanders say Nagaya to this uh, wind system and it's blowing all along the, the, the shore uh, bringing huge swell the icebergs in the fjord are just blowing around everywhere and just kind of a tiny thing in the middle of, of, of huge icebergs and so you have, I don't know, it was crazy. I think those field seasons were really successful. We collected basically all the data that we were aiming to collect collected good samples for dating, we've got really exciting carving results from, from the land party. So I think all aspects of the field season overall were really successful. This brief glimpse of Greenland shows a fragile environment experiencing rapid changes. The small glaciers are almost all shrinking and the huge Greenland ice sheet is losing billions of tonnes of ice every year. Greenland's ice really is disappearing. We have already learnt a lot, but it is imperative that scientists continue to unlock the secrets of the ice. Greenland may seem remote, but changes here are already affecting us all.